Here's a useful application of the derivative, Newton's method. What's Newton's method do for us? Somebody hands me a function, tells me to find a root of this function, that is, where is f of c equal to zero? Newton's method gives me a way of approximating that root using tangent lines. So the statement, what we're going to have is, f is a differentiable function on an interval a, b that contains our root c. If I want to approximate c, we're going to have this procedure. I'm going to start with a good guess for c. We'll call it x1. Okay, when I say a good guess, we should make it so that our guess is close to the point c that we're interested in, the root that we're interested in. If our function f has many roots, if we don't pick it carefully, we might wind up picking off one of the other roots that we're not interested in. So you have to use a little bit of judgment when you pick your guess. Then we're going to have a method for generating an even better guess. So that's going to be given by this formula here. So if, I'm, if I have x sub n, I get my next guess by taking my x sub n, subtracting off f of x sub n, divided by f prime of x sub n. This procedure here, I'm going to keep repeating it until x sub n plus 1 minus x sub n in absolute values is within my degree of accuracy wanted. Okay, so let's take a look at an example. So one thing we need to worry about with Newton's method, you may be asked the question to be solved using Newton's method, but the function that you need may not be given. So you have to stare at your problem and figure out what you're trying to do. So for instance, if I'm asked to use Newton's method to approximate the square root of 3, okay, and the calculator will get 1.73205 for this, I have to figure out what function I'm going to use. Well, if I notice, squaring the square root of 3 is going to give me a 3, so that satisfies x squared minus 3. So the function we should use is f of x equal to x squared minus 3. Its derivative is going to be 2x. So I have everything I need except my first guess. To get a good guess for this, now note we have the square root of 3. The other root of this equation is going to be minus square root of 3. So as long as I stay on the positive side, I should be fine. To get it a little bit nicer than that, though, let's start with, I know square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 1 is 1. So the square root of 3 is going to be somewhere in there. So I'm going to start with x1 equal to 1.5. Let's see what happens. x1 is 1.5. x2 is going to be just take x1, 1.5. Subtract off what I get when I put 1.5 into f. 1.5 squared is 2.25. We subtract 3, which gives me minus 0.75. Okay, then we're going to divide by f prime at 1.5, which is just going to be 3. And so my answer is going to be 1.75 for x2. To get x3, Take my answer from x2, 1.75. We put 1.75 into f. That gives me the thing on top. 1.75 into f prime. Gives me my 2 times 1.75. We crunch this down, and we notice what comes out is 1.732. So after two iterations, okay, iteration meaning runs through our gadget here, two iterations gets me down to the thousandth place and the actual answer. Here's the picture for what we just did. Let's describe what happened geometrically. I started out with a guess, x1, which was 1 and a half. I draw on the tangent line at 1 and a half, and then I follow it until I hit the x-axis. The point where it hits the x-axis, I'm going to call x2. Then we're drawing the tangent line to the graph above x2. Follow that out until it hits the x-axis. And then we're going to call that number x3. Now, if you notice, with each try, going from x1, x2 to x3, we keep getting closer and closer to the actual zero. So that's what Newton's method does for us. Let's take a look at what's happening with the equations. I'm going to start with my guess x1. I'm going to find the tangent line to f of x1. So we write down its equation. Y minus f of x1 equals f prime of x1, x minus x1. Now, we're trying to find where that hits the x-axis, so that's where y is equal to 0. And we're going to call that point x2. 
So I'm sub in 0 for y and x2 for x in the equation. When I do that, I wind up with this. Now I want to do is isolate x2 and see what's left over. Well, we can divide by f prime of x1, which gives me this, and then I can move the x1 to the other side. If you notice, this is the gadget that came out of the Newton's method procedure. Doesn't matter what xn I use, we're always going to wind up with something that looks like this. Let's look at some situations where Newton's method can break down. The first problem is going to be when one of your x sub n's winds up becoming a critical point. What happens here, since our function is differentiable, the only way I can have a critical point is if f prime of x sub n is equal to zero. If that happens, I have a horizontal tangent line, and then game over, because our process requires us to have our tangent line intersecting with the x-axis if it's going to get anywhere. So that's bad unless f of x sub n actually happens to be equal to zero, and then the tangent line is the x-axis, and then we're safe. We've just made it in. You found your zero exactly. Okay, another problem is you have to make sure you're differentiable. Otherwise, weirdness can happen. Let's take a look at the example f of x equal to x to the one third. So the graph of this just looks like our usual x cubed, but we flip in the line y equals x. So that's going to look like this. Okay, gone like an x cubed, but on its side. If you notice, drawn properly, this thing's not going to be differentiable at zero. It's going to have a vertical tangent line. We see that when we take the derivative. If I take the derivative of this, I get one-third x to the minus two-thirds. Cleaning that up is one-third x over x to the two-thirds. So if I put a zero in here, we're not allowed to divide by zero, so that's going to mean I'm looking at the type of critical point that gives you a vertical tangent line. Let's see what happens when we try to stick Newton's method through this thing anyway. So the zero I'm trying to find is x equal to zero. Okay, that's the zero for the cube root of x, right there. Well, if we take our gadget, let's see what happens. I'm going to take x sub n plus one equal to x sub n minus our functions x sub n to the one third divided by the derivative at x sub n. The derivative is one third x to the n minus the two thirds. Multiply top and bottom by 3x to the 2 thirds. It's going to clean the bottom out. I'll have a 3 there, and then that x to the 2 thirds plus 1 third gives me x to the 1. So my rule is going to be x to the n minus 3x to the n or minus 2x sub n. Let's see what happens when I start with x1 equal to 1. Well, okay, if I'm at 1, we're going to take the tangent line to the function at 1 and then draw on the line that goes till it hits the x-axis. That's going to be x2 equal to minus 2 right here. I'm going to stick that back in. We find the tangent line at minus 2. We draw it in and find where it intersects the x-axis. That's going to be x3 equal to 4. Well, if you notice what's happening, at each step, we're going to multiply by a minus 2, and that's not good because what's going to happen is these numbers in absolute value are just going to get larger and larger and larger. In fact, what's happening here is we're getting as far away from the zero as we can, which is at zero. The only reason this is breaking down is because we're not differentiable at our actual point. So that's something you have to be very careful with when you try to apply this. All the formulas here made sense, but because of the situation we have, it didn't work out.